Welcome back friends. Welcome to another video tutorial from Shomus Bhattaji. We've been talking about the endocrine system in human body. And uh, in this video tutorial, we'll be talking about uh, the hormone activity and mostly about the hormone mode of action. Uh, in the cellular and biochemical level, how exactly hormones function. And uh, in the miniature scale inside the cell, in the micro level, how hormone interacts. That's what we want to know. You know, hormones influence their target cells by binding to specific receptors. It's always true. So if there is a hormone, if I draw, let's say this is a hormone, there is definitely a receptor for this hormone somewhere present in the surface of the target cell. So this is the target cell and the target cell have that hormone receptor. That's how it works. Now the hormone receptor interaction, it initiates the process of different transforming chemical messages inside the cell and that ultimately dictates the cell to produce different proteins and those proteins are ultimately uh, provide some effects and activity in the body. So let's look at this. The goals for our learning is to learn about the hormone receptors that are present to describe the common types of second messenger that are available inside the cell and how transcription factors are associated in the activation of specific genes. Then we also see uh, the function of insulin as well as the function of glucagon together to regulate the blood glucose level which will act as an example of how hormones interplay and work together. And we also understand that hormones induce changes in cellular metabolism. So we'll see all these things in this video. We will talk about two in two different parts. In the first part, we'll talk about the hormone mechanisms, which are water soluble hormones. And the second part of the lecture, we'll talk about the lipid soluble hormones and their mechanism of action. So let's first talk about uh, the general view of the target cell response to the hormones. Now there are different types of target cells present for different types of hormones. Not all the hormones uh, interact with the uh, same type of cell. So they are specific and specified for their job. Hormones bind to the receptor to initiate the cellular response to a chemical signal. Okay? And the target cell convert that signal into a biochemical change inside that cell. So whatever chemical factor as hormone interacting with the target cell receptor it will trigger some biochemical changes inside the cell that will ultimately dictate the response from our body. Now this response is generated by two different processes. One is by direct, direct gene activation. Another one is by second messenger system. In direct gene activation that hormone directly enters inside the nucleus and it binds with the transcription factors which are helpful for tr helping the transcribe specific genes inside the cell. cell. While the second messenger system works like this, hormones will bind to the receptor. It will further activate some other chemical factors and molecules known as secondary messengers. Okay? Uh, those secondary messengers will ultimately help them to finally establish the job and finally those secondary messengers will produce some more proteins they will go and help in the transcription of the gene. So in that case, hormone is not directly interacting with the uh, gene itself. So cells respond to the stimulus in different ways. And these are the different ways that we list for the, for the process. They cause the contraction of the muscle tissue. They sometimes also call the secretion of cellular products. Uh, they also affect uh, the ion exchange channels and the ion exchange through the channels. They cause synthesis of new peptides and proteins inside the cell, which is very, very common and the most common above all. And they also cause a breakdown of storage molecules. All these things plays uh, as an effect after the hormonal activity to a specific target cell. Now, if we talk about the receptors, because you know we have to talk about receptors that we demand. Receptors are complex proteins that only respond to specific hormones. Now there are two types of receptors as well. One is uh, the receptor for water soluble hormones 
water soluble hormones and another one is for the lipid soluble hormones. So the receptor for the water soluble hormones are only found in plasma membrane. So they are present in the surface of the cell membrane while the lipid soluble uh, membrane receptors they are present inside the cytoplasm or they sometimes present in the nucleus. Okay. Now these receptors will down regulate and decrease the sensitivity when there is a prolonged exposure of this receptor towards the specific hormones to ensure that the cell ultimately needs what it gets and whenever it gets all the effects shown and responses are already being made then those receptors start releasing their sensitivity and down regulate the sensitivity towards the hormone interaction so that the process can be halted. On the other hand, these receptors also have the ability to upregulate and increase the sensitivity in response to sustained low level of hormones. So in a sense I can say when there is a low level of hormone, receptors have higher sensitivity towards it and when there is high level of hormones, receptors have low sensitivity towards it okay? to actually ensure that a proper amount of hormone is interacting and the cell is responsi uh, responsible and acting accordingly because hormonal activity requires a very tiny amount it does not require a ton now not all the cells have the receptors for all hormones and some cells respond in different types of concentration of the hormone differently now let's look at the first type of hormones that we want to talk about that is the water soluble hormones and the receptor responses mediated by the water soluble hormones the water soluble hormones are the peptide type of hormones. They bind to the receptor on the outside of the cell, in the cell surface. Okay? And there are two most common type of responses mediated by those water soluble hormones. Okay? One type of response is the G protein mediated uh, response where it activates the G protein and cyclic AMP or DAG mediated signaling which we will see in a moment and the second type is uh, it sometimes activate protein kinases. Now with the help of this G protein mediated process they also can activate protein kinases. So ultimately the goal for any of these water soluble hormones is to first interact with the surface receptor for that hormone and then activate some protein kinases inside the target cell. As we know protein kinases have the ability to phosphorylate different target proteins inside the cell that ultimately produces and modifies different features inside the cell. So if we begin the whole process system it's listed here. In this process we need a secondary messenger as we talked earlier. The second messenger involved in the water soluble hormones. In this case we are looking at epinephrine which is a type of water soluble hormone. And we see cyclic AMP molecule is acting as a second messenger there. Now in the cyclic AMP first bind to its receptor, uh, actually sorry, the hormone first bind to the receptor. Okay, Hormone is known as the first messenger. And cyclic AMP is known as the second messenger which will be developed inside the cytosol later in this process. So first, this hormone binds to the receptor outside the cell membrane. Then the receptor changes shape and activates a protein called G protein. G protein have three different structural regions, alpha, beta and gamma. Now alpha part separates from beta gamma. Okay. So that's called the activation of the G protein. And this G protein activation requires the presence of GTP. So whenever they hydrolyze this GTP, this GTP binds to the G protein and causes it to activate. This, this G protein associated with GTP activates another membrane associated protein, an enzyme known as adenylyl cyclase. Now once adenylyl cyclase is active, this enzyme can convert ATP into cyclic AMP. So once cyclic AMP is produced, this is the second messenger. Now the cyclic AMP acts as a second messenger and phosphorylates kinase, kinase type of proteins inside the cell. 
One such protein is protein kinase A. So cyclic AMP phosphorylates this protein kinase A. This is also kinase protein. So now this protein once activated have the tendency and capability of phosphorylating and activating other cellular proteins and subcellular proteins inside the cell. Okay. It can activate or inhibit different type of proteins inside the cell and this process will continue till the G protein is active. Once the G protein releases this GTP, it is hydrolyzed into GDP, it renders the G protein inactive and the process and the signaling will be stopped. Okay. So now you see here protein kinase A can mediate two different scenarios in this example of epinephrine hormone that this protein kinase A will further in turn activate or deactivate some other proteins that ultimately leads to the inhibition of glycogen synthesis and start the glycogen breakdown. So epinephrine release ensures that the blood contains sugar and the glucose should be released into the bloodstream. So whatever glycogen present inside the cell are broken down by the activity of different uh, enzymes. Glycogen phosphorylase is the enzyme which ultimately break down glycogen into glucose. But that enzyme glycogen phosphorylase is activated by protein kinase A which in turn activated by the signaling of epinephrine through the cyclic AMP intermediate. Now if you see another example of same uh, as I told you there are two ways uh, this can happen like one is the production of cyclic AMP another one is with the help of diacylglycerol and inositol triphosphate pathway. So let us look at that pathway this is diacylglycerol IP3 or inositol triphosphate pathway. In this case diacylglycerol and inositol triphosphate both acts as second messengers. Okay. Now what is DAG? Let us look at it. Normally what happens? Now in this, this DAG and inositol phosphate uh, are generated later of this whole process as we see the secondary messengers are produced in later stages of the process. So it starts with a membrane attached component known as PIP2 phosphatidyl inositol diphosphate. So that PIP2 is, is, is embedded in the cell membrane so as another enzyme that is phospholipase C. Okay. So hormones binds to the receptor on the outside of the cell membrane which changes the shape and stimulates G protein the same way. Now that activated G protein activates phospholipase C. Earlier we saw the G protein activating adenylyl cyclase which is also membrane bound. In this case via G protein, via G protein, uh, the receptor activates inositol, uh, phosphatid, phospholipase C. Okay. So it depends on which enzymes they are activating. Depending upon the activated enzymes, they will do different functions. So once they activate phospholipase C, this will convert this PIP2 into two different parts. Actually it will cleave some part from PIP2 and this cleaved part will be known as inositol triphosphate that group is released while the two phosph while the two uh, uh, lipid layers or lipid uh, chains will remain attached to the membrane known as diacylglycerol. So they have two such strands and those glycerol sequences they are embedded in the membrane here. So phospholipase C converts the membrane phospholipids into DAG and IP3. DAG remains attached to the cell membrane and activates protein kinase C. And as it is a kinase, it can phosphorylate other substrate inside the cell. While IP3 gets released after the cleavage, and IP3 causes the endoplasmic reticulum to release calcium ion into the cytosol. So here also IP3 is acting like another secondary messenger okay. and uh, it will involve with uh, the calcium channel embedded in the ER membrane. It activates it and open it so that the calciums can pass from ER lumen into the cytosol. Now this calcium can bind to the protein known as calmodulin and enhance the targeted response inside the cell. 
and and the beauty about this signaling is that the signaling keeps amplified from the beginning so there is few receptors there are only two three four receptors for example now let's say there is only one receptor that receptor can break down multiple pip let's say 10 pip it will generate 10 ip3 now the 10 ip3 can release thousands of calcium into the cell cytosol so you see it starts with very faint but the signal is increasing time to time so the idea about cell signaling is not to convey that message but also to amplify that signal so that it ultimately reaches nucleus in the bold way now now if we look at another type of enzyme that is also soluble a uh, hormone that is soluble that is insulin insulin hormone is also uh, water soluble and in that case it's a peptide kind of hormone that we know it's a large peptide so we, all, we can also call it as a protein type of hormone insulin is released when there is high blood sugar or high blood glucose we can say release of insulin will tell the cell and modify the cell in a way so that it can start uptake glucose from the bloodstream inside the cell and convert the glucose into glycogen to store it inside the cell for the future use and when the same person will be going through starvation this glycogen will be broken down into glucose again and put back to the bloodstream and for that job there is another hormone known as glucagon so this uh, use of glucose and and the level of glucose concentration of glucose in the bloodstream is tightly regulated by the secretion of both insulin as well as glucagon and both of these hormones insulins and glucagons secreted by pancreas and these are protein types of hormones so the presence of insulin increase the glucose transport it process the glycogenesis that is a conversion of glucose into glycogen and the transport of amino acids also stimulates the protein synthesis and it also makes lipogenesis that's production of lipids by using the glucose intermediates or glucose metabolism intermediates so ultimately the job and signal for insulin will be to take the glucose from the bloodstream put it inside the cell and then either convert it into glycogen or use any other anabolic pathways uh, to convert uh, that intermediate of glucose metabolic pathways into other macromolecules like lipids now here you can see the interplay between insulin and glucagon together to maintain the blood glucose level and there are also other type of accessory enzymes uh, that are involved with this and those are kinase those are all kinase and some phosphatase now kinase can phosphorylate thing phosphatase can take away phosphate group from an molecule so if you look at here let's say the blood glucose level is very high so insulin is released insulin is released and insulin will convert it will it will inactivate it will inactivate phospho this phosphatase enzyme so phosphatase enzyme actually mediates the process of conversion of glucose into some other molecules and that thing is blocked by the insulin when they act here so phosphatase activity is prevented so protein phosphatase one is blocked and prevented due to insulin and uh, so 